our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. Welcome to today's Bible study. And before we dive into the Word, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, for your grace, yes, for your love. Yes, thank you for this Word. We open our spirits to receive your word yes, that changes us. Yes, Even as it goes out, King of Glory, mm. it goes forth in power, in grace to change yes, and to reconcile men back to you. Yes, Have your way, Spirit of the living God. Yes, Reign through your word. Yes, Glorify Christ in our midst yes, that we might draw closer to him. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Amen. Mm. We ended last week at the judgment throne. And today a new chapter opens before us. John records the story of how it all ends. It is like the beginning of the end. It is a story that many of us would like to hear. Why everybody is interested in a storyline. Life tells a story. And even today, we have the beginning of the end of the story of God's relationship with man. What's amazing about good stories, all stories with good endings? Because they capture our attention. You see, when you are listening to a good story, you want to hear every word that comes out of it. That's why movies are captivating. Everything about our lives is a story. When you attend a birthday, there is a story to tell there. When you go for a wedding, the couple has a story to tell. When you go for a graduation ceremony, even there there is a story to tell. If you go to a dedication of a building, even there you see a story to tell. Basically, every moment of our lives is an ongoing story. And it is very interesting and captivating if it has a good ending. So why do we like good ending? Because believe it or not, that is what we all look out for. Consider this. Every year that comes our way, people look expectantly to that new year. And why is that so? Because there is expectation that the new year will come with something better. Sometimes it comes with good stories. But it also comes with this share of burdens and challenges. And then we look forward to another year. And some people along the way get very frustrated. 
Because to them, it is one year of frustration and challenges after another. So should we not celebrate the new year? Should we not have hope for new beginnings? For the believer in Jesus Christ, you have reason to hope. Because every new day, Every new month, every new year brings you a day closer, brings you a month closer, brings you a year closer to this event that we are all awaiting for. We take our text today from the book of Revelation chapter 21. From verse 1 to verse 4. And let's see what the Bible has to say concerning this event. The Bible says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first Heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, Iranzi, John, Yokana, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them. And be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. No more sorrow. No crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. What a wonderful story. It is a story of new things coming in perspective. What we are witnessing here is an era that is glorious. It is an event that exceeds anything we can think about. Here we see John is testifying that I saw a new heaven and the new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sin. Look at what he sees. He's saying a new heaven and a new earth. What has happened here? We have come full cycle. The Bible begins in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the book of Revelation 21 1, John sees a new heaven and a new earth made by God. What we see here is the creation. And he emphasizes in verse 4 that the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. So we see a new heaven and a new earth coming. Which is amazing. The other day I was reading somebody who I was listening to someone who had a different view of this account. He said, God will not bring things new, he will repair. 
yenga agamba ati katonda talingiza yo bintu bipya ye agenda kudabiriza ebiliwo so that is the problem that comes when you place all your thoughts on the things that are on this earth because the very thought of them going away gives you sleepless nights. It is like investing in stock. So every time every, you spend more time monitoring this stock, Something you are not doing previously. But now you do it because that's where your treasure is. So if all your treasure is on the earth, then the very thought of the earth going away gives you good pimples. It gives you restless nights. It makes you have headaches. So what will happen to my wealth? What will happen to all this that I've accumulated? That is what happens with when materialism comes in the way. It is not evil to have good things. But when we place our trust in things, then our fears are grounded and rooted with the things, with the very thought that these things will one day go away. Look at what the Bible says. To amplify the fact that actually this heaven and earth will go away. God is not left without witnesses. And in the scriptures, we see several indications and how this will happen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, from verse 10 to verse 13. This is what the Bible says. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief within the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Stop there for a moment. So the passing away of heavens and the earth will not just happen dramatically without any notice. Peter tells us that they will pass away with a great noise and the elements of the earth will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Look at what's happening. The earth and everything in it are going to melt away. That's what the Bible says. And it goes on to say, therefore, since all the things will be dissolved, disappear, decimated, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for the hastening of the, looking for and the hastening of the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Not just the earth. But the heavens as well. And it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens 
and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. The last phase, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Now, we are looking forward to new heavens and the earth. So, the point is this. The author in the beginning turns out to be the finisher. And then he recreates everything anew. Now look at, this is confirming what he has previously said to us in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 65, verse 17. This is what the Bible says. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. The former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Basically saying, he is not going to repair. He is not going to remold. He is going to create. And the former shall not be there. So nothing of the old will be in the new. And Peter Apostle Peter ends it so well. He says, and righteousness will dwell in this new earth and in the new heavens. What an amazing story. So, the question many ask is, how long will this last? This new one that God creates, how long is it going to last? The answer to that is found in Isaiah 66. Verse 22. This is what the Bible says. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. Shall remain before me. Saith the Lord. So shall your seed and your name remain. The point here, God is trying to stress through his prophet is that the new heavens and the new earth that he creates will remain. In other words, they will abide forever before him. That means they will never come to an end. So, from these three witnesses of scripture, we have established one, there will be new heavens and a new earth created by God which shall remain forever. So, what we see here is God creating the universe. But the story even gets better. God does not just create the universe. He is also revealed in the scripture as the one who creates a people for himself. In the text, the Bible says, that John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He is seeing a model of this city coming down and he says it is coming down from God 
I want you to see the origin the new heaven and the new earth from God. Now we have the new city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God. So God having established a new earth and a new heaven now descends a new people all a new city which the Bible calls a bride adorned for her husband. Now, I want you to see this and we contrast it with what we saw earlier in Revelation 19. We see here a city which is both a city but also a woman. Just as we saw in chapter 19 concerning Rome, as a city, which was called Mystery Babylon the Great, and which was called a woman and a city as well which was the false city. And we see that then, we see the new Jerusalem coming down. We saw, the, we saw Rome or Babylon, the city of mystery, being set up which has the false identity trying to mimic what the new Jerusalem will be. That one was destroyed for its evil. This one will be reputed for its righteousness. Look at the contrast. Why does he call it this city the bride? Bride speaks of intimacy. City speaks of community. So basically it is a community of believers who have intimacy with God. The other one was an community of believers who were swayed away by the devil using the prophets and the beast as his agents. Back to where we are. When we look at this and we will see it deeper as we go down in Revelation chapter uh, in verse 9 and verse 10, when we tackle that in the future. What this picture represents is the picture of ourselves in the future. It is the picture of the church. It is the picture of God's recreated people. You see, this coming down is an amazing one, the way the Bible talks about it. Listen to what he says. The Bible says, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and he himself will be with them and be their God. What an amazing encounter. This takes us back all the way to when the children of Israel were on the journey to the land of promise. And God asked them to build the tent of meeting with the objective that he would come down. 
and dwell amongst them. That's where we get the word tabernacle. God tabernacle. God dwelling amongst his people. In Christ Jesus, we then become the tabernacle of God. God dwells in us. And that's a wonderful thing. Because God now no longer dwells in buildings. God dwells in the lives of his people. But the story even gets better. The God who saved us by grace will now dwell amongst us. I believe this present reality will show the fullness of the glory of God that has not been experienced before. Yes, we have his spirit now. We have his presence now. But this is only a foretaste of what is going to happen. So when the Bible refers to this, the Holy Spirit as the guarantee or the guarantor of things to come, we should get excited about this. Because what we see concerning the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the lives of men in the church of Jesus Christ does not compare to the glory that will be revealed. When God comes down in majesty, glory, and power to dwell amongst his recreated people with no sense of evil there, there will be no sin. It will be a state of glory. This is what John talks to us about in First John chapter 3 and verse 2. He says, Beloved, now we are the children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. So when Jesus is revealed in his glory, the Bible says we shall be like him. And that is the reason we shall seek him for who he is. Right now we see in part, Paul tells us, but when the complete has come, it's, it will be glorious. It will be majestic. It will be beyond description. It will be marvelous. We shall see him for who he is. Because we will be free from all the blinding effects of sin. So there will be nothing that hinders us from seeing the glory of God. The Father who dwells in unsearchable light, which is unapproachable, now dwells in the midst of his people. That unapproachable light now opens up to everyone. How glorious can that be? How majestic can that be? Then we will know 
fellowship that is unending, then we will know a fellowship that is unhindered. Then we will know a fellowship that is unbroken with our Maker, with our Daddy, with our Father, with our Savior, with our Redeemer. Hallelujah! It cannot exceed anything that you can imagine. Fellowship with the God of love. Love abounding beyond measure. Love going by hips and bound. Love uniting a people redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You see, this community goes beyond your local assembly. This is the community of all believers of all time. Father Abraham will be there. And all the saints down the road will be there as the bride of Christ, as the new Jerusalem come down from God to dwell in the new earth. How glorious that will be! How glorious that will be. We see something important here also happening. The fourth insight that I want us to pick is God making all things right. Look at what he says in verse 4. The Bible says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no death. Death no more. No sorrow. No crying. No pain. For the former things are passed away. No more night. No more crying. No more pain. No more weeping. Everything that we associate with evil. Everything that we associate with sin. Will be no more. You see, God is not only going to make a new world and eradicate sin, but he's going to also take away every lingering effect of sin in our hearts, in our lives, from everywhere that he will dwell in our lives. So the tears of regret, they will be wiped away. The tears of guilt, he will wipe them away. The tears that come from the broken promises of your life, he will wipe away. The tears that come as a result of the broken relationships, he will wipe away. The tears that come out of the brokenness due to sin, he will wipe it all away. Yes, even the tears of loneliness. Yes, even the tears of anguish. All that he will wipe away. He just doesn't create the environment. He comes to the hearts and the lives of his people and removes everything that is associated with the brokenness of sin. Hallelujah. 
At the end of it all, every one of us will have a story. A story of how our sin and how the sin of other people harmed us. Everyone has that story too. But that story I'm speaking to you right now will come to an end. It's not going to last forever. On that day, God will make everything right. He comes to dwell in our hearts and our lives. He comes to tabernacle with us. He comes to dwell among us to remove every state of brokenness. Look at this. The hands that were pierced for our sins will now wipe away such love such love that demands a response from you such love that demands your life such love that demands your everything. All your guilt, all your shame, these fans will wipe them away. Why? Because he loves you. So if you are listening today, I, I may not know how deep your story is. I may not know how sad your story is. I may not know how long this pain has endured. But I stand here with good news. God sent his son. And through his son, Jesus Christ, that pain, that tears, everything that sin and brokenness represents in your life, there is a day that God has a day where everything will come to an end. Somebody, you're trying to commit suicide. Thoughts of suicide are flooding your mind. Committing suicide is not the solution. Surrendering to Jesus is the solution. He will put an end to everything. Don't listen to what the devil is telling you. Today, submit yourself to the Lord. Surrender your cares to Him. He will make it right. Both now and forever. The new earth lasts forever. The new heaven lasts forever. The tabernacling of God amongst his people, dwelling in righteousness, will last forever. That is his promise for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Because even now, you're moving to touch the lives of these your people. Healing the broken heart. Bringing hope and restoration to those that feel forsaken. To those that feel abandoned. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak hope. 
I speak restoration. I speak an uplifting king of God. In the helpless situations of their lives, I speak king of glory. A turn around for your glory. A turn around for your honor. A turn around, King of God, for your realm. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, I thank you because you declare, behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything to hide from me? To that one watching and listening to us, to that one watching and listening to us without hope, I speak hope to your situation. Is it a disease that has lingered? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I speak healing right now because by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we Father, I thank you because somebody is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you because that shame is being taken away. Oh Lord, I thank you because that blanket of heaviness is being removed. Lord, I thank you because your glory is descending right now. Receive his forgiveness. Receive his mercy. Receive his love. Lord, I thank you. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Be glorified, King of glory. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord of This is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Lamba le kosi karimonta ze chains be broken in the name of Jesus. Mele kubia kosi kubia tasa kaya. Lepere kosi demo shika de bosa. Oh Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Somebody give him glory, give him honor, give him praise for what he's doing right now in your life. For what he's doing right now in your situation. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The scripture itself, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing all good. Healing all them who are oppressed of the devil. Right now, that operation is living in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Lord of glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, to you who has never given your life to Jesus, this is your day. This is your moment. Why don't you surrender your life to Him? Right now. Right now. Say, Father of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. I have carried these sins for long. This burden is too much for me. Lord, 
I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose again from the dead and is seated at your right hand. Therefore today, Lord, I believe that his death was my death and I surrender my life to him. Lord Jesus, save me. Save me now. Fill me with your spirit. Write me a name in the book of life. That on that day, when you are revealed in your glory, I shall be like you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, God has saved you. Call the number on your screen. Somebody will receive the call and give you the first instructions into this wonderful journey. And your life will have a better end. Your latter days will exceed the former in glory. In the name of the living God, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, I thank you for your people. For those watching us, for those listening to us, Lord, I commit them to your hand. I pray, Lord, you bless them. Provide for them. Open the gates before them. Usher them into places of prayer. Cause them to be effective for your cause. Cause them, Lord of glory, to live their lives with the understanding that whatever they see is perishing. Only what is invested in you will last forever. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, from Dominion Church International, we say, God, richly bless you. Till we meet again. Shalom.